It is uh, <laughs> Tuesday, 1 March 2016 at 7.02 p.m. I'd like to call the regular Board of Trustees meeting for the Village of North Hudson to order. And first item is uh, invocation. Uh, dear Lord, uh, we've had a lot of suffering and uh, things happening in the area. I would ask for your... Uh, uh, sympathy and your uh, uh, condolence or your uh, help for the family that uh, the Duncan family that uh, suffered a major house fire last night in the village I'd also like to have you spread your grace to the Goltz family in uh, Hudson that lost a daughter uh, in a car accident recently and I would also ask for your uh, protection for your uh, uh, help uh, protecting our police officers we've uh, lost 10 police officers so far in 2016 and uh, that goes with all that serve I pray that uh, you all remember them in your prayers and uh, and for this uh, we ask your help amen uh, roll call please here here. Brian Berglund. Here. Hey. Here. Stanifer. Here. President Weapon. Here. Trustee Zappa. Here. Thank you. Uh, item number two, review and approve minutes from the regular board meeting of 5 January and emergency board meeting of 2 February. Thank you. Brian, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, any um, amendments or changes? Yeah. Questions to the board meeting? Minutes? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item number three, comments from the floor is an opportunity for residents to make the board aware of topics, issues, opportunities, either on or not on today's agenda. And... Greg, you should. 1004 Riverside Drive. Old Bill 92 Sally Sally. And I had sent a letter in about this issue. There were three walls that were installed in 1990 as part of the Riverside Improvement Project, Riverside Drive Improvement Project. Mm -hmm. They have removed some wooden walls that were there probably since the uh, easement was granted in 1947 and replaced with a segmental concrete block wall. And these have been deteriorating over the past five years. The uh, concrete blocks are crumbling and starting to fall apart there. One of the walls has already collapsed. Uh, that was constructed by the village. Um, that is, has created a hazard and a, a nuisance. It's, these wall blocks are about 100 pounds each. I tried to move them off um, the lawn at 922 Sally's Alley because they did roll quite a ways and a number of the blocks are leaning against a tree that is dead. So there will be further collapse of that wall. Now, these walls should be replaced as part of one project. I think that's why the village took it on in the first place, because you can't, they're all contiguous walls. The wall next to the driveway is um, next to another wall that holds up Riverside Drive, which is next to a wall on the north side, Riverside Drive, which is um, going to collapse in probably in the next few years. I've been taking pictures of the wall. The uh, blocks have been gradually getting worse. It's the freeze-thaw cycle that is <clears throat> trying to get one that's large enough to, to show. But this is the wall on the north side of Riverside Drive. You can see that the concrete is just crumbling. So if, <clears throat> if you replace one of those walls, say the one that's fallen, there's grading to be done, um, regrading to replace the driveway that's possibly going to undermine the wall that's still standing on the south side of Riverside Drive. And um, if 
that wall has to be replaced. Any work that is done has already been done on the, the wall at 922 Sally Sally would have to be redone. All of the grading would have to be redone. Um, so it would be extra expense. Anyway, if I just removed a piece. This is from the wall that, on the south side of Riverside Drive. You can see it's just, it's just falling apart. So this, this wall is just gradually, not gradually, it's been accelerating over the last few months with the freeze-thaw cycles. So it started out slowly and now it's been, every time I go out there, it, you can see advanced deterioration. And what I'm looking for is this, I mean, this has to be looked at as one project. You can't replace one wall and then go and replace the others because you'd be redoing work that's already been done. So that is basically our concern. Well, you're not on the agenda tonight, so we can't discuss this as a board. Mm -hmm. We appreciate, you know, the issue and of public works and our engineering people have looked at it. I believe it's on the agenda for uh, next month. So, uh, you know, you'd be able to come to the public works meeting and uh, and discuss it more. I appreciate, you know, like I said, I appreciate, uh, uh, you know, we are aware of what's going on there, but we can't discuss it tonight because it's not okay. on the agenda. I appreciate it going on the agenda. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What date is it? Excuse me? What date is it? Uh, is it on the March or the April, Mark? No, April. March. May. March. It's next Tuesday. Next yeah. Tuesday. Yep. Oh, Tuesday oh, after? The 15th. 15th. Two weeks. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, I can fight with this computer, is we have our uh, Brian Elwood from XL Energy is here to do a presentation on uh, solar energy options. Uh, we've looked into solar energy uh, as a possible savings for the village as we're always trying to you know, find a, a way to save a buck or two. And there's uh, been a lot of development in uh, uh, solar energy and solar gardens. So Brian, I'll let let you take over. Great. Well, thanks for having me. And we'll see if we can get this. Let's see if we can get this working. Oh. Don't touch. All right. Well, thanks for having me. For those that don't know me, I'm Brian Alwood. I'm the community service manager for Excel Energy here in Hudson and St. Croix County. I also represent Polk County and Pierce County as well. Um, been with Excel for 21 years, and you may have known Trudy Popenhagen, who was in my position prior to me. She retired a year ago and is enjoying her time in Florida and up at her cabin up in Polk County. So glad to uh, talk a little bit about solar energy. When I'm out in the community, the question I get asked more than anything else is what's going on with solar energy? There's a lot of discussion about solar energy, and solar energy is something that people are definitely interested in. Excel Energy as a company, we're definitely a national leader in renewable energy. We're the leading provider of wind energy in the country. Uh, your energy right here in, in North Hudson is provided by Excel Energy and 25% of that is provided through renewable energy. So that's a combination of wind and solar already on our system along with hydropower as well. Customers want more renewable energy. So we've been looking at different product, products and projects that we can offer to customers. And Solar Connect Community is the product that we're offering here in the state of Wisconsin. We just rolled out this project uh, a week ago um, and excited to talk a little bit about it tonight. Talk a little bit how community solar is different than other solar products um, that you may have talked about. Typically when people think about solar energy, you think about installing solar panels on your home or your business or your, or your um, building and that can get expensive. You know, there's a cost with installing those solar panels, there's cost with operating and maintaining those systems. Through community solar programs, we allow customers to pool their resources together and have a community solar garden and then receive the credit of the solar energy that's produced from that solar garden. Um, we've had gardens pr um, produce energy in states like in Minnesota and Colorado that Excel Energy serves, but these gardens are the first community gardens that we're offering here in the state of Wisconsin. Our program will be the biggest community solar program in the state of Wisconsin. It's up to two megawatts that we're gonna build in 2016. And we have 
approval from the Public Service Commission to build up to another megawatt in 2017 as well. And we'll look at that uh, once we get through with the first two megawatts. You may have seen community solar gardens in other communities as well. St. Croix Electric has a community <coughs> solar program that they offer to their customers as well. Uh, New Richmond Municipal Utilities, River Fall Municipal Utilities. You may have seen the River Falls Solar Garden when you go south on 35 there. So solar gardens, community solar gardens are a great option for customers, particularly those customers that don't want the hassle or the maintenance of, a, of maintaining their own solar garden on their building. So what is a community shared solar garden? So it's a centrally located solar PV system that provides electricity to participating subscribers. And that's important because we want to make sure that the program is fair to the customers that are participating, but it doesn't raise the cost for customers who aren't participating. So as you'll see from this solar panel, you can kind of envision that one home or business would receive the credits of the solar energy produced from one of those panels and another home or business would receive the credits produced from that panel. And that's really how it works. You receive the value of those, the solar energy that's generated through that centrally located solar system. So why community solar? So we talked a little bit about this, but community allows anyone to use solar. Right now, about 70% of our customers cannot install solar on their homes because they e either rent, live out in the woods where they have too much shade, maybe their home faces the wrong direction. So about 70% of our customers can't even access solar energy on their own home or business. Community solar allows anyone to use solar energy and receive the credits that that solar energy produces. You don't have to install or maintain the panels. There's an upfront subscription cost, and then your cost is done. You receive credits on your bill over the life of the contract and you don't have to maintain the system. The system is actually maintained by a solar developer, and we'll talk a little bit about who that's gonna be for our first two community solar gardens. Um, the cost for a community solar array when you pool those resources is obviously less than an individual array. Um, we talked about roofs that may be shaded or oriented in a way that you cannot generate solar electricity. So community solar gardens are really a good option for those customers as well. So as we talk about Solar Connect community, it's easy. There's just a quick, simple, one-time enrollment fee for customers. Customers do receive the renewable energy credits that goes along with the solar energy that's produced. As a company, we retire those credits on behalf of our customers, so we don't use those credits to comply with any state mandates for renewable energy. Those are assigned to our customers that subscribe to the program. Customers can sign up to 100% of their maximum use um, at their home or business. So whatever your maximum annual use is, you can sign up to receive all of your energy through one of the community arrays. The minimum subscription is 200 watts and the maximum subscription is 400 kilowatts. And local, so it's important to note that these community arrays were, will be built in the state of Wisconsin. So XL Energy, we serve a pretty wide <coughs> swath of northwestern Wisconsin. We serve all the way from Ashland down to Viroqua, from Hudson over to Abbotsford. So we have a pretty big service area. And we put an RFP out to different solar developers and say, hey, can you come and build solar here in the state of Wisconsin? <coughs> so they looked at a couple do dozen different sites, and the two sites that were chosen um, are in Eau Claire County and La Crosse County. Now, while they might not be located here in St. Croix County, our customers do receive credit for the solar energy that those arrays will provide. So we talked a little bit about that. You choose your solar subscription. Um, there's the one-time enrollment cost for that. And then you get a credit on your bill for whatever that solar energy generates over the next 25 years. So again, you pay your upfront cost. Once the solar array is generating electricity, we'll measure how much electricity is coming from that. Then you receive a credit proportional to what you, your subscription cost is over the course of that 25 years. So the price, so it might be a little bit difficult if you don't understand how pricing for energy bills works and it can get a little bit complicated. We've talked to the village a little bit about this. Um, $1,780 for a kilowatt, $356 is the minimum subscription amount and that's for 200 watts. Um, there's an upfront deposit that we're asking customers to have. Once we get a critical mass of customers here in the next two to three months, we'll go back to the solar developer that we have the RFP with and say, here's what we've got and then they'll build the arrays. The intent then is to have all the solar arrays built by the end of 2016. Um, they'll begin producing energy by the end of 2016, early 2017, and customers will then start to receive credits on their bill. 
Once the deposit is paid and the array is built, that's when the balance is due for subscription cost. So customers will pay that before the solar array actually goes into production. And then going forward, customers will receive a credit on their bill. The credits that you see here, seven and a half cents a KWH, and then 6.9 cents a KWH are for different customer class sizes. So for instance, the village hall is on a demand rate. So the credit that the village hall would receive for the solar energy would be 6.9 cents a kilowatt hour. Now these credits are, are, are the floor right now. So these are the lowest that the credits will ever be. We don't wanna forecast what the credits might go up to over the period of time, but certainly energy costs go up over time. We go into the Public Service Commission um, every year or every other year to look at our costs. And so those credits likely could go up over time, but we don't wanna <laughs> presume what that might be. But it's safe to say that these are the lowest that the credits will ever be over the term of that 25 year contract. So what a bill looks like, you've probably all seen your bill before. So you'll see your typical energy charges um, and there'll be a credit on the bottom of the bill. So the credit will be a multiplication of whatever the solar production is by the subscription amount and then the credit will go on top of the customer's bill. So let me give you a real life example. So this is the village hall. So the village hall uses 41,000 kilowatt hours per year. So if you wanted to size a subscription for about half the energy use of the village hall, that'd be about a 16 kilowatt subscription. These are the numbers that we showed you before. So the cost of that would be about $28,000 um, deposit and then the balance due would be about $25,000. Um, we estimate that based on where these solar arrays are located, um, because they are high efficiency solar arrays, they generate a lot of energy, um, about 20,000 kilowatt hours per year based off that 16 kW system, um, subscription size that the, that the village could do. The credit that you receive on your first bill, and that's the credit based off the solar production, would be about $1,400. The payback is about 17 to 20 years. Again, this is just an estimate. We don't know what that credit will do over time. But it's important to note that using even those very conservative estimates, that there will be net solar credits in excess of that subscription amount over the course of the term of that contract. So if the payback is somewhere between 17 and 20 years, the contract is for 25 years, you'll continue to receive those credits over the life of the contract. I'll just pause right there and see if there's any questions. Does the contract move with you if you move from one house to another? Yeah, great question. So the contract does definitely move with you if you're an Excel Energy customer in Wisconsin. It'll move from house to house with you. Uh, if, for instance, you downsize dramatically in your house where you, you have a subscription size that exceeds what your average use is at that new home, you can, you can change your subscription amount at that time. But if your average energy use fits with your new home, um, your subscription amount will stay the same. Um, if someone passes away, um, the company will buy back their subscription if they would like to. Um, customers can also choose to donate if they're moving out of, you know, out of our service territory um, to a nonprofit. They can donate their subscription amount to a nonprofit as well. So what would be the average kilowatts per home? So an average home uses about 750 kWh um, per month, so about eight, 9,000 kWh per year. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the average home, if you did 100% home subscription size, I'm not sure what the kW subscription would be. It's a little bit difference between kWh, which is the energy used, and then the subscription yeah. size, which is measured in kilowatts. <coughs> So I know that the village has looked at solar energy in the past and um, you know, the benefits of reducing your carbon footprint or having sustainability goals that residents wanna see. Community solar is really a great option to do that. Once the subscription costs are paid for, there's no operating and maintenance costs going forward. So the solar developer for our program is Pristine Sun. They're out of San Francisco, California. A very big solar developer. They've developed solar projects throughout the country. Um, we're very confident in their ability to construct a quality project. Um, if there's maintenance and things that are needed to the solar garden going forward, that's handled by the solar developer. Our customers are only required 
um, for that upfront subscription cost and then receive the benefits of those credits going forward. Any other questions? So just real quick, um, uh, schedule coming up. So right now between February and April, we're doing this kind of early subscription drive. We're trying to find out what customers are interested in these projects. Um, if we get enough people interested in the projects, we'll go ahead and build them this year. Um, we're also holding these town hall solar power hours. So we're contracting with the Midwest Renewable Energy Association. They're hosting 10 solar town hall meetings. One's gonna be in Hudson on March the 16th at seven o'clock. Um, Given an op opportunity for people to come and learn more about solar energy and also sign up for the program there. Um, as I indicated, we expect to construct the arrays in the fall of this year. They'll go operational by December. And then early next year, customers will start to receive the credits on their bill for the program. So we're really looking forward to customers signing up for these pro programs really giving solar energy a boost here in Wisconsin. And once we get these first gardens constructed and built and operational, we're looking to build more in the future. Is there like a website or something that people can look at this too? Yep. Oh. There you go. That nice I think you saw that slide. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, xlenergy.com forward slash solar connect community. Again, this program is only offered in the state of Wisconsin. We've got other community solar programs in different states that we offer, but this is our our solar program here in the state of Wisconsin. If you got questions, our email address, solarconnect.com at xlenergy.com. Our program team can answer those questions, whatever they might be. And we've talked to the village about uh, solar energy as well. If you have additional questions about how much solar energy would be needed, not only for maybe the village hall, but for other facilities as well, we can look at that and give you a subscription amount that would work. Sounds good. Melissa, can we put this on the website possibly? Would you mind uh, forwarding that uh, sure. presentation to us? Sure, be happy to. Awesome, thank you. That'd be great. Well, thanks, Brian. Unless anybody else has any more questions. Thank you very much. Okay, great, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, <clears throat> item number five, adoption of final special assessment report for street improvements for Lemon Street North, approval requested. <coughs> have a motion for approval. Is there a motion? I'll move, Stan. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Colleen. Um, questions, comments? This is uh, Kevin. Uh, there want to give us a quick recap please out there um, when you look at what the preliminary numbers compared to the final uh, we ended up about forty three hundred dollars less which is a good thing um, and then if you go into oh schedule C kind of is the breakout that's the uh, assessment role um, individual property owners they're gonna see a credit of between four to six hundred dollars than what we were originally looking at last year and then when you go back into the you know the payment schedule those individuals will be allowed to pay that back over a four or five year period so yeah. any other questions thank you questions from the board Okay, it's, uh, it's uh, special assessment. Uh, all in favor of uh, the uh, motion to approve the final special assessment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Thank you. Now, item six is the resolution 2016-01 for levying the special assessment for street improvements for the Lemon Street project. And I move to approve re resolution number 2016-01. Thank you, Colleen. Second. Um, can I spell this? Uh, read the whole thing, Terry. No, you don't have to read a whole resolution. That's fine. Okay, so we just go with the, with the number. All right. Is there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote for the assessment. There, uh, Brian. Aye. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Item number seven, application for conveyance of land filed by Joseph Granberg at GS, GNS Land Solutions, LLC, and Philip mm. Taylor, Taylor Investment Company, LLC, approval requested. Your motion? I move to approve the application for conveyance of land between the adjoining properties of Philip Taylor and Taylor Investment Company, LLC, at 609 Galahad Road, North. Second. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, is there questions? Is it Mr. Granberg, are you here? Uh, I'm Phil Taylor. I'm Phil Taylor? Okay, did, I'm not sure if there's going to be any questions, so Jim, <laughs> I'm, I just want to let everybody know if there are questions on uh, on what's going on. Uh, everybody, it's very standard, no, has been yeah, recommended. I read for through approval. it. I don't have any questions. Okay. Yeah. No, sounds good. Uh, so, uh, all in favor of the, uh, the motion as uh, presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You are good to go. Thank you. Um, let's see, item number eight, reschedule April village board meeting due to spring elections approval requested. Uh, we have discussed the uh, 29th of March. I believe, as because the election is the following Tuesday. Uh, if you guys, everyone, please check their calendars and uh, see if that works for everyone. And if it looks good. Can we have a motion? Hold on. The 29th. 29th. The previous Tuesday. He's good. I'm good to make up. He's good? Yeah. All right, I'm in town. Uh, all right, well, then, then we can have a meeting. It's awesome. <laughs> so, so would you make a motion to, accept, or to uh, move the meeting to the 29th? Mark, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, all uh, in favor of the meeting being moved to the 29th of March, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The government would grind to a halt without you guys. <laughs> <laughs> These meetings would be a lot longer, wouldn't they? Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, new business from the board or staff. Uh, uh, in first is president's comments. Uh, I've been <coughs> asked by the school board uh, to remind everyone that uh, there is uh, informational sessions coming out. There's a three bond referendums going to be on the ballot in April that we just moved our meeting for. I think most folks got these in the mail. Uh, I would urge everyone uh, to uh, educate themselves on the referendums, uh, the costs associated with, and uh, they're, they're having, uh, let's see, the first, uh, the list of meetings here. Yeah, the first meeting was on the 22nd of February, which you can't no longer attend, but there is a meeting on uh, March 3rd at the Hudson Middle School from 6.30 to 9.00. There's a meeting on 24th of March at the high school from 6.30 to 9. Uh, both of those meetings, there will be building tours that will take place. Uh, <laughs> you can look at the uh, school, uh, Hudson School sites that's uh, listed on there. We'll have these on the website if you would like to look at those. But uh, there are cost breakdowns, and uh, I really hope that everyone will uh, make the effort to uh, 
learn about the, uh, the referendums that they're proposing. Uh, next item I have, uh, uh, as most everyone probably noticed, last Saturday we had a 60 degree day and the bicyclists and the motorcycles are out in full force. I would uh, hope that everyone would pay attention to that and watch out for bikes and motorcycles. Uh, I know a lot of the little uh, children's are, uh, uh, you know, getting their wheels back under, under them, so give them a wide berth, slow down for them, please, uh, so we don't have any incidents. And finally, for me, I would like to wish everyone a happy and blessed Easter. Uh, Gloria. I just have one item. I'd like to congratulate Melissa on her three-year anniversary coming up. She's been a great addition to our staff, and we really enjoy working with her. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Melissa. Melissa, do you have anything for us? I didn't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to jo Gloria, and, and I thank you both. You've been, you should make make this job a lot easier than it, it certainly could be, so or, or would be without you. So I mean, uh, I much appreciate it. Should have had cake or something. You guys never tell me when you have anything going on. Uh, let's see. Okay, next is planning commission. They did not meet. Um, Personal Finance Committee uh, claims and approval. Stan, can I move to approve the December 2015 on recurring claims of $4,333.32 in March 2016 on recurring claims of $68,440.04? Second. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, any discussion? Uh, spending issue, uh, we'll start with Kirk. Yes. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Unanimous. Uh, next, uh, we have a, a presentation by Jim Thomas and a request for funding of the USGS Willow River Stream Gauge discussion and possible approval. Uh, finance recommended that uh, uh, we push this to the board for their consideration. Uh, Jim is here, so we should probably have a, uh, I guess we have to have a motion to, uh, in order to hear the presentation. Or I don't think so. Okay, no. presentation first, okay. Jim, Sounds you're up. good. Uh, thank you very much, uh, board trustees. Uh, my name is Jim Thomas. I reside at 1140 Riverside Drive in North Hudson, and I am uh, currently the vice president of the Lake Malaloo Association. Um, everybody is aware of what has uh, been going on with the dam. My specific request to you tonight is there is a USGS, United States Geological Service, uh, gauge testing facility south of the dam on the Willow River, uh, south of the dam that was there that was removed. That unfortunately was shut down due to a funding issue um, in September of 2015. Um, during this period of turbulence with um, obviously the silt, sediment, phosphorus, nitrates, everything coming into the uh, Willow River and subsequently Lake Malaloo, it's a very critical time to be able to test this water. Um, ben um, Torson from the USGS is the director of this program and, and what the reason for testing this is why I have reached out to Hudson, town of Hudson and to North Hudson is that in the event that the water quality ends up becoming dramatically impaired it would ultimately have an effect on property values which will directly affect uh, property tax revenues for the three surrounding municipalities. 
Um, we hope it doesn't get to this, but by having this in place, it will give us the information we need going forward to make sure that what is coming into the lake is acknowledged and uh, we're aware of it. Um, Hudson has approved um, the request for $2,000. Uh, the town of Hudson approved it tonight and uh, my request is the same for North Hudson for $2,000. This is a one-time request. And then we, the Lake Association, will make up the remaining difference, and this will keep this open for one year. This is not a reoccurring request. We are going to reach outside to different um, uh, areas going forward in hopes that we can um, just get this this funding for this first year when it is such a turbulent time. Um, that is pretty much it. I'll try to keep it short and any questions. So Jim, what happened to the shortfall? How did it come up short $8,000? Is it state issues or? It was a DNR issue. The DNR used to fund all of it, and for some reason, they took their funding completely back, and their 50% funding that they are um, responsible for now is actually coming out of the dam rebuilding fund. Yes, Daryl? Jim, in the information that we were provided with and read before the meeting, you indicated that you were hoping for a three-year commitment. Has that changed? You, you, you <coughs> specifically said this is a one-time request. That's question A. Question B is, you said that you were going to seek other sources. What happens if those do other sources don't pan out? Will you then come back to these other municipalities? Um, in all honesty, Daryl, I think that if the other sources don't pan out, it will probably end up being closed in the future years. But this period of time, we've actually been taking samples. We just haven't had the funding to get them processed. But having a snapshot of what happens over this 12-month period going back to September of 2015 <coughs> will will be enough evidence to go forward that we know the same amounts of sediment are going to continue to come in if we don't get funding. Okay, so specifically you are not looking for a three-year commitment, it's no, just a one-year? this is a one-year commitment only, yes. Who's taking the samples? Uh, it's the United States Geological Service, and uh, it's a gentleman named Ben Torson as the director. How, how the facility operates, real quickly, is it's just a concrete building. It's about 10 by 10. It's solar powered. It's heated. It's got a refrigerator uh, with a huge carousel in it, and it's got 28 sample bottles. So anytime there's a water event, they can run this from anywhere in the world and just program it, and it'll take a sample. And it's pre-programmed programmed any time that the water level fluctuates. It tells how much water is flowing through, and but it will automatically take a sample if there's a huge um, um, surge of water. Mark? So the, the testing for the next year is to fund the continuation of it. it. They've been actively doing it up till now, or when did it end? It ended September of 15. September. But with that being said, we have been taking samples because it costs nothing to do that. Okay. Where the cost comes in is sending those samples off. So our key, our key time is going to be this spring with everything that has changed in Little Falls Lake and what happens with sure. the spring runoff. That's what we really want to capture. So where is it physically located? Um, hold on one second, yeah, Ted. I think oh, I'm like sorry. Jim, if, if the data you collect is not what you desire, does that, uh, does that kick in a mechanism to have sort of remediation, or is, it, do you have to, or is that another whole other avenue you've got to go down? Well, basically what we're trying to do is have data so that we can make a determination going forward. The DNR in this situation, and, and I don't disagree, they, they had to do something with the dam. Um, 
and their responsibility is the protection and well-being of the residents and the people that could be harmed. Um, but there does come a point where they have the, a bit of responsibility to address the impact that the removal of this causes. This, having this information at a point in the future could help out with that issue. So in other words, the DNR's position right now is they don't care what happens to the Malu. The, the they do of the water, care, but it's... Not enough to fund the testing of the water. Right. Yes. What, what puzzles all of us is this has been open forever. It's been funded forever. I shouldn't say forever. A long period of time. Why it was closed right at the most critical time going into this is anybody's guess. But we just basically want to make sure that we're looking out for the best interests of the quality of the water for everybody it affects on so many different levels. The Valley of Homes is just one. Uh, the use, the fishing, um, just recreation. So the data collected would, would have some concrete value going forward? Yes. Okay. Yes, it will. Anything else? No, that's good. Thanks, Ted. Ted? I'm sorry. Physical location? Physical location, about uh, 400 yards uh, south of the Little Falls Dam that was breached on the east side of the river. So if you walk through the Willow River State Park, it's just on that little path um, before you go over that bridge that goes over the river right. to the walking trails. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty interesting little facility, and uh, it's definitely got a purpose. And uh, with your approval tonight, um, we will be able to move forward and uh, have the um, uh, the total support of all three municipalities that uh, are involved in this. So are you going to hit the county up? I'm sorry, what's that? Term? Are you going to hit the county up next year if you need more yeah, money? Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We're... Um, we, we have been just under so much pressure, and I, I have to apologize. I've been on vacation for an extended period, and uh, this all, this is just, just there's been so much to deal with in so little time that, um, I'll be honest, this is uh, the most important part. The other aspect of this is we've had a lot of involvement with Sheila Harsdorf, with Dean Knutson, with everybody on the eastern side of the state, and they really want to see involvement by the municipalities and this show of involvement will be really helpful on a lot of levels going forward even though it's a small amount it shows a commitment and a desire um for from everybody that we care about what's happening yeah. and that lake and park has a huge economic Im impact around this area so that's a, that's what i'm you know yeah. curious as to why. yeah in a nutshell it's uh, i think they said it brings 28 million dollars in revenue annually just with what people spend in the surrounding municipalities areas and already they are seeing less than 50 percent of the reservations for 2016 that they had for 2015 so their approach that most people come for the view and the waterfalls is is we're finding out that people really do want a lake there so um yeah it's all all of this is important and it's all interconnected okay thank you jim if there's no further questions is there anyone want to make a motion to i'll move to approve stan thank you mark is there a second thank you colleen uh any further discussion uh since this is a spending issue i'll start with brian yes 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 ted yes yep thank you uh and thank you jim uh talk to my bankers you know, <laughs> glory <laughs> glory and melissa somebody will be able to we'll be, uh, we'll be in touch with you thank right. you uh, who's, oh, the, very much. You, who's the usg guy again what's um name? it's um ben torson uh i get it yeah i'll find him yeah thanks absolutely yes and truly thank you all very much i really appreciate it thank you for all what you're doing yeah no problem
We've got nothing better to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see, run for the well, board you again. Your vacation start, didn't you? <laughs> uh, see, yeah, right. see in four weeks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> see in four weeks. Okay. Uh, next uh, item C: Bank selection options discussion and approval. Uh, we're we're good. every year we look at banks and uh, to make sure we have places to put the meager funds that we have uh, and uh, we've been having some issues with uh, our present bank the uh, let's see it's some central bank to what is it gonna be now Midwest one or something like that and uh, it's just uh, to uh, the motion would be to allow uh, uh, Gloria to do an RFP for uh, uh, for our banks approve the R RFP to um, for our banking services. Right? Thank so you, Mark. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Colleen. Discussion? <clears throat> Daryl? I listened to some of the discussion that was taking place at the Finance Committee and my observation, which may not be fair, but my observation was that there was not great enthusiasm to move forward with an RFP. Um, I would urge two things. I would urge us to do it because I think it's important to get um, a request for proposal for all kinds of village services on a regular basis to review not only levels of service but costs. But I also would urge us, if we're going to do this, to be serious about putting out an RFP and not just do it for the exercise and um, not be serious about taking the information that comes in and making a decision. Because I can tell you, <laughs> from the other side, responding to these things is also a lot of work. And if we're sending it out as an exercise with no indication that we're serious about getting the information and make a decision, then I would vote in the opposition of sending it out. If we're serious about it, which I think we ought to be, then I'll vote in the affirmative. No, I I believe we are going ahead with it. You know, I mean, it, it uh, may not have sounded like it at the at finance, but we would like to do that because it is you know our responsibility to agree to get the best product and best prices for any of our services. Right. Out I'm here. just pointing out that responding to an RFP for bank services. And that comes from somebody who is in the business a retired for a while. banker. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of work. You've had and, the, and no, and and we're not doing this to just to have them jump through hoops, and uh, you know, and you know, again, we'd be very happy to stay with the bank, you know, if they are competitive right. with w the other ones that are out there. Right. Uh, any other comments or questions? All in favor of uh, the motion to uh, uh, run an RFP for bank selection options, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Yes, thank you. Item 12, Public Works Committee recommendation. Chair update first. Ted? So uh, Public Works did meet, and we do have a request for the full board. Um, there has been uh, Mr. Sweeney. Unfortunately, I'm actually be quite transparent about it. I was hoping he'd be here tonight Surprise. since it's his issue. Uh, but in any case, uh, with the... Um, Lakeview Drive Pine Street enhancements that we've made over the summer. There appears to have been some uh, drainage issues on Mr. Sweeney's property, which actually does not adjoin or abut up to the um, Lakeview Drive, but he's down below it on Riverside Drive. And he has come to us on numerous occasions to ask that we help remediate a drainage issue onto his property. And with that, I guess, Kevin, I'd ask that you just give kind of a general update, and then we can decide if we need to. Okay, so this is on the end of uh, Lakeview Drive. 
street project that we did here last last year. Um, this is where we put the, you know, there was quite a bit of discussion about the, the hammerhead on the south side. Um, we ended up putting some riprap in this particular area and that's shown, it's in the black. Um, just, just because we've seen a lot of erosion, you know, when we originally did the field work out there, some erosion that was taking place. And back last fall, um, Mr. Sweeney approached us and had some concerns with you know, some of the drainage that was coming off the roadway. The roadway itself was reconstructed to the uh, existing width that was out there before. So in theory, um, there wasn't any additional impervious area that was uh, added to this. Um, so kind of public works looked at this a couple months and we've approached David on this too, just to get his input into it. And this is what we're looking at constructing um, either next month or the following month. We'd just be, you know, enlarging what's out there right now, trying to make that into a depression area, putting in a manhole uh, with a casting and then an open bottom with some wash stone and then uh, a pipe that would head off to the east. Just try to promote as much infiltration since you have such good underlying soils in the area, some granular material and then creating a, a berm on the, the southern portion where you know, the water would overflow in the bigger storm events. So just trying to, trying to redirect uh, the drainage kind of in the more of a southeasterly direction instead of going due south. And David's on board with everything of what we're proposing here. I've approached Total Excavating Company that did the original construction and uh, they're anticipating around $4,000. Project budget-wise, um, we've got all the numbers pretty much finalized. Uh, the overall project looks like it's going to come in about $16,000 less. So there definitely is some dollars to, uh, to use to, to do these improvements. And this is on village property, correct? Yeah, the, the village, the stash line that's here that's representative, um, anything within inside of that is, is village property. So... That's which one size, thing we did approach. What size drains going to the east? What's that? What size pipes going to the east? We were thinking like a 12-inch pipe, perforated pipe, that would sit in the bottom of that. What are you sinking in for a manhole size in? Uh, it'd be like a 48-inch manhole with four-foot okay. depth. Just to try to get it just below. Just four? Okay, that's all you need? That's good. Just to get, you know, below yeah. the frost, yeah. frost level. Should be able, easy to clean out then for us. And yeah. Yep. So... Any other questions? No, it's, this is like a lot of the parks we have. We should name this because a lot of our parks are drainage areas, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> no, we don't name parks after. <clears throat> but uh, no, I, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, the uh, issue, it, it's there. It's not improving, uh, you know, his property. It's, you know, we're in a, you know, if if we were causing it, or if there is, you know, it was an awful wet fall. Yeah. But uh, you know, but I mean, again, if it's uh, running through there, I mean. Well, look at it this way. It's a good test of it. Fix. We have some dollars in the yeah. construction budget. Right. Two years from now, it's out of the general budget. Right. Yeah. And it's whatever happened there, and as Kevin alluded to, I don't. <coughs> The streets the same size, but you shift one thing a little bit one way or the other, and the water run differently. So yeah. mm -hmm. oh, it seems yeah. like a reasonable fix. The only thing is, we don't think we changed the water flow. Kevin has repeatedly told us that we set the road back the same way it was, and this guy's been there three years. We did have a lot of water last year, and if this doesn't hold or or work. Is he going to come back to us again? Are you suggesting that the fact that we're fixing it acknowledges culpability yes. in it? Oh. So if we didn't do anything different, my only question is why would we fix it? I think, you know, we're just trying to improve, improve the situation that was out there before. Um, that's where all the water went before we did the construction. Um, you know, there was erosion that was taking place. 
<clears throat> we were just putting the riprap in there just to try to mediate that issue. That's, as soon as we put that in, that's kind of when all the, you know, questions came up from, from David. So there was a lot of discussion about what was it like prior to, mm -hmm. and what was it like after, and kind of where I landed on it was, I wasn't there prior. Clearly, there was erosion onto his property. I don't yeah. think anybody disputes that. Mm -hmm. So I can't really, in good faith, look at Mr. Sweeney and say, you're trying to get the village to fix a problem for you that was there to begin with. I don't know. I don't know if I look at it that way. I, I think that the fact that we're responsible for the street, <clears throat> we created a runoff area, regardless of the circumstances, if there is some runoff going to the Sweeney's that's causing a disturbance, wouldn't it be in our best interest just to be responsible yep. to put yep. in a modest drainage yeah, yeah. Absolutely. catch system? Yep. So yes. I, I don't think it admits any culpability. No, I, I think either. it's just mm -hmm. actually st we step up to the plate better and try to yep. enhance the drainage aspect right. of it. Yeah. Drainage is a funny thing. I mean, you do all the engineering you want and it... Uh, it can go in different directions so we're making an attempt to it and it seems like a reasonable one and we have the funds yeah. to do it i think yeah. not to do it i i, I think is I, I i don't see the rationale for that I, I do think it's key that the engineer is saying that this is a this is a, just an improvement to a situation it's not that we're fixing something it's an improvement right yep and just you you said earlier there was a lot of discussion on the hammerhead now did that add impervious surface to the area it added some impervious area but when you look at the whole drainage area it's a small amount yeah. it, it, and you know and when you're downhill when you're under you know at the bottom of the hill there's always going to be a water issue of some sort yeah. you know so, so as terry mentioned that we're just improving the situation we're not attempting to alleviate yeah. all drainage situations here oh thank you you know can't no it's an improvement yeah it's, it's yeah. an improvement on the project so yeah. that uh, you know i'm i'm good with it we have a motion in a second is there any other questions uh okay the suspending issue so uh let's start with kirk this time yes 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 and Stan, do we need to clarify the amount? I don't know if I uh, wasn't it read in the, the four thousand. Did you made a motion? Did I? Huh? No, I don't think I did either. Actually, oh, that's I thought I'm you made. I thought you made yeah. the motion for. Yeah. That so. Oh. Okay. Having well, said that, right. I would make no the motion. motion. <laughs> yeah, but we already voted on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> No yeah, we did too. Vote. Yeah, so, uh, you, voted, so but I you didn't will, vote on a motion. Okay, I will motion that um, we proceed with fixing the with uh, with making the drainage improvement drainage improvement uh, not to exceed the amount of four thousand dollars. Thank you, Ted. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Colleen. Okay, now it's been the motion has been made and seconded. It always happens when I just say. Get off, uh, Listen, paying attention. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, an impro session, you know. My fault. Uh, Kirk. Yes. 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 No. Thank you. All right. Next uh, item: public safety. Mark. Uh, we did meet, but we have no action required from the board. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Fourteen public welfare committee recommendations. Colleen. Public welfare did not meet. Thank you. And 15, Park Board. Park Board did meet. Um, and Buck Malik had um, given us another presentation about the urban forestry program that we've been invited to participate in with Hudson. Um, and we would like to purchase a total of 10 trees, nine of which to be at Chief Jansen Memorial Park and one here at the village. So two swamp oaks, two Japanese lilac, two redmond lindens, two river birch, and one honey locust. Um, the swamp oaks and the um, the lilacs at the village hall will be um, planted um, 
on Arbor Day, probably April 30th, um, and the rest will be put into the gravel bed for planting in the fall. So I'd like to move purchase of 10 trees and gator bags, tree stakes, wire and grommets um, at a cost of $1,100 to be paid for with the funds available for Chief Jansen Memorial Park for nine trees and the one at the Village Hall to be paid for from the park maintenance fund. Second. Thank you. Colleen, thank you, Mark. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Uh, and this is funded out of the park maintenance, so, uh, Brian? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. I'm guessing all these trees are good for that particular area. I mean, you know, like I hear swamp oak, and yeah. I guess there is a wetland up mm -hmm. there, but I mean, <laughs> I'm just curious as, you know, we'd put a swamp tree up on a sand dune, you know, I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, uh, just a question. But, uh, I'm sure yep. Buck had our best intentions and <laughs> yep. for there. So, all right, uh, the next item on the agenda is... Uh, to, uh, we, the board will consider convening into closed session pursuant to that 19 dash or dot eight five parent one parent e to deliberate or negotiate the purchase of properties public properties involving investing in public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session with respect to the possible purchase or lease of the municipal garage from Zappa Development LLP. So uh, we need a motion. motion to go into closed session. And so move. Thank you, Daryl. Second. Second. I'm going to recuse Brian. myself, Stan. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Uh, okay. So uh, well, let's say you have Mark's going to recuse himself from this. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Yes. No. No. Oh, yeah. Need a roll call vote. Yeah, have a roll call. Okay. Ro roll call vote. Brian. <laughs> yes. You could vote no, right? And then he gets to stay. Yes. 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 Okay. Now we've had a thing. Good night, Doug. You too. We be turned on now. Mm. Yep. We're good to go. Okay. Uh, we are back in open session after the discussion to uh, uh, on the purchase of uh, the uh, uh, municipal garage from Zappa oh. Development LLP. Uh, and could we have the motion now, Colleen? No, I'll move to appoint an ad hoc committee to pursue the possibility of purchasing the currently leased building from Zappa Development. Stipulate the purchase price in the next lease agreement to purchase at some point in the future or start looking for a different location to purchase in the future. Okay, can I just raise Thank my hand Lynn? for a minute? Do we want to get Mark back in here? Uh, he may he, have left. He might have gone to. But he shouldn't be. He should, he's recused oh, himself okay, from this issue. And somebody else can make the motion to adjourn once we yeah, get this vote and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I I have my doubts that he's stuck. He, here. he took his jacket. You, so don't, huh? you don't need a motion jacket. to adjourn anyway. Okay. Are we start that. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, all in favor? I have one question. Who's okay. going to appoint the ad hoc committee? How's that going to work? Who is going to be on it? I will appoint the committee. I uh, I would assume that uh, Mark uh, will be on it. Uh, I sure. Somebody from Public Works, whether mm -hmm. uh, it be, uh, you know, if Ted can free his schedule to be here during business hours or whatever, or he could have, uh, he could have somebody on the committee. Uh, and Gloria, since, uh, you know, Funding. It doesn't need to be a very big committee. Just a, you know, somebody from Public Works, Public Works Superintendent, Village President, and Village Administrator. Okay. Sound good. Sounds good. Okay. All in uh, favor of the motion, uh, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed. We have an ad. We will have an ad hoc committee to investigate this further. And since we don't need a rec. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. 
We are adjourned at 817. Or 818.